Hi everybody, this is Lee McQueen and today I'm talking about a report released by Election Justice USA. Uh, they are on the internet and I'll post the link in the description so you can get uh, to their website directly. Uh, but the report they have is in the form of a PDF that's been publicly disseminated. It's called Democracy Lost, a report on the fatally flawed 2016 Democratic primary. And it's pretty thorough. Um, there's a lot of information here, but it's written at a level that most people can read. I would say that um, anyone who's capable of voting, um, 18 and over, will be able to follow what's going on in this document. And anyone 18 and over who is voting or has voted or who wants to vote should definitely read this document because knowledge is power. So um, there's contact information for elect Election Justice USA if you want to get information. Um, they got into action very quickly following the Arizona primary. Um, Arizona served as a lightning rod for the rest of the nation. There had been election fraud happening prior to Arizona and then after Arizona, but it was Arizona that alerted the rest of the nation that something very wrong was happening um, during the primary season. And so um, they're saying that they give a summary of the direct evidence that they've acquired for election fraud, voter suppression, and other irregularities that occurred uh, during the 2016 primary. And um, they discussed the voter registration, the registration uh, tampering, the illegal voter purging that occurred, evidence of fraudulent or erroneous voting machine tallies, and then miscellaneous evidence. And they also estimate the number of pledged delegates that were affected. And they've come to the conclusion that if these irregularities and fraudulent activities had not occurred, Bernie Sanders would have won the Democratic primary. Um, so they go on to state the legal actions that they have taken and will take, the lawsuits that have been filed and are yet to be filed, and they are numerous. Um, they specifically single out Arizona, New York, Illinois, Ohio, and California um, for discussion. And then they discuss the impact of a legal case, Shelby County versus Holder, on voting in the 2016 primary. Um, further, they actually document specific anecdotal evidence of voter suppression and election fraud in the 2016 U.S. presidential primary. Uh, for instance, the direct voter suppression, the reduction in the polling places, um, which um, affected uh, Bernie Sanders' voter share, and then the six different ways that they targeted no party preference voters in California. Registration tampering, illegal voter registration purges, inaccurate voting machine counts, the exit polls and computerized vote counts, and how Hillary Clinton's vote share increased with the precinct size independent of demogra demographic factors and how the machines that were used for voting are hackable. Then they also go into detail um, about the Democrat National Committee's um, obstruction of the Bernie Sanders campaign and how they colluded with corporate media outlets to marginalize and smear Senator Sanders. So um, they also discuss how the use of the superdelegates were used pre-voting um, before they voted. So they used pre-polling of the superdelegates to shape the media narrative about the primary um, and how Bernie Sanders had no chance of winning and how he could not possibly catch up even though he had every chance to win. Um, they also discuss the evidence uh, released by the WikiLeaks email archive. So there's a lot of information included. It's discussed, it's compared, it's um, interweaved. So the narrative is very clear of what happened. 
And so um, they break it down by the early states, like even as far back as Iowa, the very first caucus, and how Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada very quickly um, indicated what could possibly happen, that Bernie Sanders had every chance to win, even though the narrative had been shaping that um, it was inevitable for Hillary Clinton. There was no way that, you know, Bernie Sanders could possibly win. But the voting in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina alerted them that it was possible that Bernie Sanders could win. And that jump started a lot of um, irregular activity in the voting system. Super Tuesday, they discussed, and then the March 2nd through March 15th primaries, and then, of course, Arizona, New York, what happened on April 26th the May contest, and then finally the June contest. Um, and then there, there are states that require even further analysis. But most importantly, they also issue uh, numerous uh, recommendations, and I'm going to try to scroll down to uh, get to those very quickly, of how they feel that um, this can be um, uh, fixed. Um, all that occurred, how it's fixable and it's affordable. Um, it's not, um, some people are, uh, have come to the conclusion that voting reforms require a constitutional amendment. No, uh, these are state, mostly state driven um, activities. So all you have to do is contact your state representatives or your election officials and these, these can be fixed. But what they're saying is that they do have some solutions. Uh, one, they say that the 2016 Democratic primary should be decertified based on all the information um, in every single state um, in which they have a reasonable doubt that they've established to doubt the accuracy. Then they come up with three simple reforms that will eliminate the mere possibility of the vast amount of fraud types um, that they've demonstrated in the report. They're saying that Exclusive use of hand-counted paper ballots in all future U.S. elections. No voting machines, no digital, you know, readouts. Um, hand-counted paper ballots, the way we used to do it, the way most um, civilized nations who want an accurate vote count do. Traceable, um, something that can be documented, something that can be observed and verified, paper ballots. Um, they also say that um, voter registration should be automatic with same-day party affiliation switching as a mandatory condition for all elections that are publicly funded. And these are, these elections are publicly funded. Uh, we've been using corporate machines with proprietary data. No. <laughs> public elections that are publicly funded uh, should be publicly accessible with hand-counted paper ballots. No more corporate machines, no more mysterious proprietary data, no more hackable um, uh, gate back doors into which anyone can get in there and do anything they want to. So those are one and two. And then the last recommendation um, that uh, they recommend is restoration of voting rights legislation, which would ensure adequate access to polling sites. So um, that's what they're saying, reinstatement of the Voting Rights Act, um, strengthening, making sure that the polling sites are accessible because the states that were previously suspected of having irregularities which inspired the Voting Rights Act, as soon as that legislation was um, no longer um, providing overs oversight, these same states are the ones that cut up and uh, created the chaos. So they're saying, one, hand-counted paper ballots, and that's for this fall. <laughs> not next year, not 2020, not somewhere in the distant future. Three months from now, paper ballots. And then voter registration, automatic voter registration, and then restoration of voting rights legislation. That's what they recommend. And um, even with the instant runoff voting or 
uh, other types of runoff voting um, uh, legislation, that takes place at the state level. It does not require a constitutional amendment and a vote in Congress. It requires you to get some um, activists agreed on this issue and then pressing your state representatives, your state security, your, your um, Secretary of State office, anyone involved with um, procedures with the um, state-run elections um, in your state, whether it's Massachusetts or California, Texas, Iowa, Nevada, Minnesota, you can get this done at the state level. The state legislature legislature can do this, and it doesn't even take that long. Jill Stein says less than 36 hours. So for anyone that tells you it's impossible, they're lying to you. Um, they want to defeat um, voting rights reform, and you should question their reasons why. Um, but these things can be done, and they should be done, most importantly. And hopefully they will be done in time for the November election. So anyway, the link is in the description to all these recommendations and then the discussion of everything that went wrong during our Democratic primary. And hopefully um, you can read through it and uh, come to your own conclusions of what should happen from here on out. Good luck.